Hello, welcome back to the next installment of the Honors Pre-Calculus video lecture series for Mr. Billingham's class. Um, I would much rather be doing this with you in the classroom. This is a lot more tedious and not nearly as much fun, but I hope you get something out of this. I, I hope it has value for you. Uh, since this is Holy Week, my plan is to assign only one section of material this week with a Pearson online homework assignment due m the following Monday evening at 10 p.m. As always, the video tutorial pretty much follows the online text, and you are encouraged to read that first. So first of all, numerical summaries of a data set are called statistics. So statistics are numerical summaries of a data set. We're really interested in numbers called parameters that describe entire populations. But since it's very difficult, if not impossible, to measure entire populations, we gather statistics from carefully chosen samples and use the science of inferential statistics to make inferences about the parameters. So parameters measure an entire population. Statistics are from a data set that's just a subset of the population. Here's a little example for us to look at. In a 2004 study called All Work and No Play, listening to what kids and parents really want from out of school time, reported that 32% of middle and high school students wished that there was an after school activity offering homework help. This survey was, or this report was based on a survey of 609 randomly selected students in grades 6 through 12 and had a margin of error of plus or minus 4%. Is this measuring a parameter or a statistic? Well, first of all, since it tells us that only 609 students were randomly selected, that certainly isn't the entire population of 6 through 12 grade students. So this is clearly a statistic, not a parameter. And the margin of error is calculated using mathematical techniques beyond the scope of this course, but basically it says that the actual percentage of students that reported um, they wanted an after-school activity involving homework would be somewhere between 28% and 36%. If you wanted to study the effect of chicken feed additives on the thickness of eggshells, you'd need to sample many eggs from different hens under various feeding conditions. Suppose you were to gather data from 50 eggs from hens eating feed A and 50 eggs from hens eating feed B. How could you compare the two? To com effectively compare two sets of data, we need to think about three different aspects of the distribution. The first aspect is the shape. It might be unimodal, multimodal, symmetric, or skewed. And we talked about all of this back in section two. We also want to look at, perhaps, the center of the distribution, indicating where a typical measurement is. And finally, we'd like to look at the spread. And the spread tells us, oh, how widely varying the data is, or how close together it is. Several different statistics can be used to measure center and spread. The first thing we'll look at is the median. The median is a measure of the center. And it is one of three types of statistics that legally may be described as an average. To find the median of a set of n numbers, first put them in order, typically ascending order, but it could be descending. And if there is an odd number of entries, the median is the middle number. And if there is an even number, it's the one that's right in between the two middle numbers, so the average of the two middle numbers. We're asked to find the median of the annual home run totals for Roger Maris's major league career. And I'll get you the data right now. To calculate the median, I need to list the number of home runs attained each year in an ascending list. Clearly, the first one is 5, then we have 8, 9. I'll go ahead and put in the rest. So there's the data. Since there are 12 entries in the data, which is an even number, we want to find the average of the 
middle two, which are the sixth and the seventh. Well, 16 and 23 add to 39, so they average to 19.5, which is the median. I mentioned that there were three different measures of the center. The median we just looked at is one of them. The arithmetic mean we'll look at later. That's what you get by adding up all the values and dividing by how many there are. And the other one is called the mode, and it is the, the whatever figure occurs most frequently. So imagine a small island. Nine people on it have an annual salary of $1,000. One person earns a million dollars per year. What's the median salary? Well, that would be $1,000. To get the arithmetic mean, you'd add up all the salaries and divide by 10, and you get $100,900. Which is more accurate, that an average salary on the island is 1000 bucks a year, or over 100000 a year? So you can see the word average really can be used differently. Another type of statistics for a data set describes the spread of the data. The crudest measure of spread is the range, which is the highest value of the data set minus the lowest value of the data set. In the Roger Maris example, the spread or range would be 61 minus 5, or 56 home runs per year. The range can be strongly influenced by outliers. In this, the outlier of 61 hits in one year was a pretty big value. And in my earlier salary example, that outlier of $1 million a year was also a pretty large example. And that can kind of distort our sense of the data and how widespread it is. Just the same as the median separates the data into halves, the quartiles separate, separate the data into fourths. The first quartile is the median of the lower half of the data, the second quartile is the median, and the third quartile is the median of the upper half of the data. The interquartile range, IQR, measures the spread between the first and third quartiles, comprising the middle half of the data. It's a better more generally accurate measure of spread than the range. So to find all of the uh, quartiles, you first find the median. To do that, you follow the procedures above. Now leave out the median and split the lower half of the data and the upper half of the data. The median of the lower half is the first quartile. The median of the upper half is the third quartile, and the median is the second quartile. We're going to refer to a five-number summary of a data set as the collection of five ordered items, beginning with the minimum, then the first quartile, then the median, then the third quartile, and then the maximum. For our next example, we're asked to find the five-number summaries for the male and female life expectancies in South American nations. Here's the table. The first thing we need to do is, after separating them into male and female, list them in ascending order. Here's the result. Since there's 12 data points for each of males and females, there'll be six in the below the median, six above, and there'll be three in each quarter. I'll split it up now. So we start with the minimum for each. For males, 60.0 for females, 67.0. Now, the first quartile is right in between the um, two 69.4 and 71 for males. It splits those two quartiles. So they are 1.6 apart, so we'd add 0.8 to 69.4 to get 70.2. For the Females, we want the number right in between 75.5 and 77.6, which is 76.55. The next number is the second quartile, also known as the median. Right in between for the men 72 and 72.5 is 72.25. And 
right in between 78.3 and 78.5 is 78.55 for females. The um, third quartile uh, for the uh, men is right smack in between 73.2 and 74.5, and they are 1.3 apart, so we add uh, 0.65, so 73.85 for the men. And for the women, we want the number that's right in between 79.3 and 80, 7.7 7 apart, so 79.65. And finally, the maximum for the men, 76.2, and the maximum for the females, 82.3. So let's take a look at the, uh, the average, in other words, our medians. The males have a median lifespan of 72.25, and the females have an average lifespan of 78.55 more than six years greater. So the females are living statistically quite a bit longer than the men. How about how spread out the data is? Well, there's two measures we can look at at that. The range we've already looked at, and we talked, I think, briefly about the interquartile range. The interquartile range is a better descriptor of the spread because it sort of ignores the outliers. You just take the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. So for the men, that would be 73.85 minus 70.2. So the interquartile range for the men is 3.65 years. Now let's check the same numbers for the women. So there's the data, and the two conclusions we can draw are on average, median, the women live longer, but their age at death is not as widely spread out as the men. They're less varied. So here are two histograms. Remember them? Basically they show frequency diagrams. We want to answer a few questions. Which distribution has the greater range? Well first of all I have to assume that the units on the x-axis are identical. If they aren't I can't answer the question. So let's consider the two histograms. The histogram on the left spans one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Whereas the histogram on the right goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So the histogram on the right has the greater range. Which histogram has the greatest interquartile range? Well, let's mark off where the interquartiles lie. First, I'll mark the min and the max. Now let's find the median. On the left, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven data points. So the one right in the middle, the fourth one, would be the median. In the right data set, there are 11 data points. So the sixth one would be the median. Remember, when there's an odd number, the median is the middle one, and we throw that out for finding the first and third quartiles. So the left half of the data in the first one has three elements, and that second bar is the um, first quartile. Similarly, I calculate the um, third quartile and both quart first and third quartiles for the second histogram. So now let's ask the question, which has the greatest IQR? Well, on the left, one, two, three, four. And on the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so the greatest interquartile range would be the second one, and that's not surprising because it looks more spread out. And which histogram displays a data set with more variability? Well, Pretty much either way you measure it, it's the right one, but the interquartile range is a better description because it doesn't take into account the outliers. That's the end of this video uh, lecture. Um, I hope it was helpful. I hope you're all staying well and healthy. Um, I hope you're not too bored. Uh, please feel free to email me. I'd love to hear from you. Honestly, anyone. Email me and we can talk. We can see what's going on and uh, love to touch base. 
and I'm going to try to have some sort of a class meeting using Microsoft uh, Teams next week that we can all just check in and say hi. I will be posting an assignment tonight and should have the rest of the uh, video material out um, in the next 24 hours. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.